The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick off the trading week and you do it with markets in positive territory, folks. In the last six minutes, though, this market turning a little bit negative. Not sure what's driving the news. It kicks off right at nine in the morning, but we'll start with the S&Ps right now. I have things on a one minute chart just to illustrate the little drop off that we had starting at nine o'clock. We're positive by 17 points. You're up four tenths percent. Look at that acceleration, man. Nine o'clock in the morning on the dot. We got volume coming into the indices, trading a little bit lower. You got the S&Ps down about 12 to 15 points from where you were trading just seven minutes ago. NASDAQ 100, there's a drop off for you to the tune of about 100 points in the last five or six minutes, man. Not sure what the news is driving. If anybody's got it in the den, please let me know. Uh, try to stay informed of all the news coming up to the program, but something's going on at nine in the morning. Maybe it's just selling, folks, because look at the volume coming into this market across the board. Dow right now up 155. The Dow had been approaching 33,000. We're just shy of that level, 32,940. And you got the Russell up by 11 points right now. That's about six tenths percent. Bitcoin up 1,200 bucks this morning. You're trading at 2,424,000. Excuse me, 165. Crude can what $89 closed out Friday session this morning. We're opening at 87.73. We're down a buck 28 in the price of crude. Gold contract catches a bid. You're up to above 1800 in the last hour or so. You're just under that level right now. We'll go back to a 15 minute to see some of the context right now. There was Friday's plunge. You're back almost to the highs that you had before that acceleration in the gold contract. Silver right now, positive by 43 cents. Silver actually above to where we can you all important notes and bonds you get the tenure up 10 ticks at 119.22 quite the week last week when you think about we had a 122 handle last week you almost got a 118 handle to end the week we're sitting right now at 119.22 and we jump over to the volatility indexes this market marches towards almost almost 4200 we got the vix right now excuse me slightly elevated the vix 2174 you take a look at the vix man on a daily basis right it's been a slow decline, man, since the middle of June when we had the market. You had the S&P just above 3,600. We had the S&P approaching 4,200 right now. Uh, the VIX backing down from 35 to 21. You see the previous times we've had back downs in this market. Uh, do we get a spike? Do we get another spike? We're coming into CPI. Quite the blowout jobs number on Friday, man. Did you think that we'd get a jobs number like that with all the Fed speak and the market would actually trade higher? I did not. But that's the market we're dealing with right now, folks. So many different influences uh, shaping the price action on this market. We get CPI this week. We got earnings still coming out. Uh, and let's jump into some of the action this morning. We jump over. And let's talk a little bit of analysis. Stock rally at odds with profit outlook. So this is Morgan Stanley's Wilson, right? What are we looking at? Yes, it is. Uh, the best part of the stock rally is over. Goldman Sachs cutting the 2023 profit margin estimates on input cost pressures. I mean, 4,200, man, we're sitting with the highest of 4,800. I see that. I feel like the risk reward of this market right now coming into everything that we're coming into uh, with the margin 200. Now, some context here, okay? You back things up from the move that we started. Awesome. Thank you. NVIDIA, my dad's in there. Perfect. NVIDIA's got a warning for us, folks, and uh, they warned the market. Yes, yeah, something was happening right at 9 o'clock on the dot. Let's jump over to NVIDIA then if that's what's driving the action. NVDA. Oh, yeah, they're down 13 bucks this morning. This thing, man, from 346. I was looking at stock, shorting this stock last year. The multiples when it was up here were just bonkers, man. When this thing ran from 200 to 356 in the span of October to the middle of November, Right. And it was back to that level almost by the end of January. And right now we're going to open at 176 on this equity. You jump to a five minute chart and there's your drop off. So that's what driving the market. Thanks, Dad. They've got to love it. Uh, OK, jumping back. Uh, um,
profits were net to see U.S. profit margins contracting from record highs. The forward net margin is in red. The S&P 500, okay, is in black. Those forward net margins might catch up with the indice in terms of where we're trading at there. Uh, yeah, skeptical of the rebound. He's a bear, okay? He's calling it a bear market rally. Inflation has peaked, will probably fall faster than the market currently expects. That still doesn't bode well for stock markets as it'll reduce operating leverage and weigh on comp uh, company earnings. We think it's premature to sound the all clear simply because inflation has peaked. Folks, we don't even know inflation has peaked. There's so much analysis out there, okay? These articles were getting written months ago. Now, here's what I'll say, man. You got yields way down. You have the cost of energy way down. OK, you do have signs that inflation has peaked, mostly because of some of those. But we're still dealing with some serious supply chain issues, folks. We're still dealing with some human capital problems that are going to be persistent. The Friday jobs number. I mean, are you telling me that we can tame inflation as we're adding 500,000 plus jobs a month with unemployment at 3.5 percent? Where's that in the conversation of inflation peaking, man? Uh, there is a lot of volatility to come. Bank of America, they expect the S&P 500 trading between 3,800 and 4,200 until the Fed's next meeting in September. I think that's a very reasonable take, folks. Um, and that's just a little bit of a fundamental take. I mean, these are the warnings they're talking about, man. NVIDIA comes out this morning. Let's see if we can find the action that they're talking about on NVIDIA right now. Uh, preliminary second quarter guidance below estimate. They cited weaker gaming revenue. In that update at 9 o'clock, let's see if we can pay it. Let's see. Uh, let's pull it over and see the numbers they're actually talking about here because this is going to drive some of the action. Oh, boy, that's a big one. Uh, second quarter revenue, they're going to miss by 15%. Hoo-hoo-wee. $6.7 billion versus $8.1 was what they were looking for. Gaming revenue, my goodness. They're going to miss by a billion dollars. They're going to miss by 30-plus percent on gaming revenue. Data set of revenue they're going to miss. Overall revenue, I said they're going to miss by, geez, $1.6 billion. They're almost going to miss by 20%. Gross margins are going to go to 43.7 from 65.1. All right, these are the revisions that bears talk about, folks, all right? They're not guaranteed to come, but these are the revisions that the bears talk about, man. Um, when they say that, you know, we're really going to see some of these revisions – whether it's, you know, final quarter of the year, whatever it be, that is quite a revision when you talk about revenue, man. Second quarter revenue, $6.7 billion. The market may have been looking to upwards of $8.4 billion. Whoo-wee. Watch out for that one, folks. Jumping back to the S&P, not that bad coming into a Monday morning, man, up 14 points. When we got a jobs number, we're actually sitting right where we came into the jobs number right now. What if I told you, at 8.15 in the morning on Friday, that we're going to have 500,000 plus jobs added, we're going to have unemployment at 3.5%, and you're going to kick off Monday morning with NVIDIA telling you that they're going to take in 15 to 20% less revenue coming up. Well, I'd say we'll be right where we were coming into that number. No, you probably said it would be lower, folks, okay? Uh, I don't know how you tame inflation with the market adding 500,000 plus jobs on a monthly basis with unemployment at 3.5%. And the market's just sticking with it, man. But in terms of up, uh, yeah, in terms of accelerations both way, we're going to play it out, folks. Stay tuned. we got a lot to talk about. Monday morning, S&P's up by 15. We'll be right back in three minutes, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 18 points. NASDAQ 100 right now. You're up 51. All the markets holding up relatively well, man. When you think about where we are in the context of inflation, in the context of this economy, not slowing down one bit. We got a Fed meeting next month in September. We got CPI data out this month, man. You got NVIDIA talking about declining revenue. Maybe it's just because they're talking about gaming revenue, missing out a billion dollars of gaming revenue. But boy, when NVIDIA misses their revenue by 15 to 20 percent folks you better pay attention you're talking about billions of dollars but the market just marches on but guess what we got an opening bell in 11 minutes that's where we really find out where supply equals demand let's jump over to the s p right now i'm going to take a little bit of a longer term outlook on this thing just to show you where we are on some of these fibonacci retracement levels you take it off the first acceleration, the most recent, I should say, from March 28th, okay? You have the S&P sitting at about the 50%. I'm going to take that off for a moment. I'm going to put it back to the high we had kicking off the year, 4808 in the S&Ps. We dive down to a low of about 3639. And that 50% line, right, there's a lot of action right now at 4200, folks, all right? If you're a technical trader and you're looking at the S&P, number one, you're coming up against the 50% retracement of the entire move lower, Okay. Number two, you have some action in terms of where you're coming off. Just the recent trend. Okay, 42.53 is the 618 of the trend from March 28th. I'm going to take that off just because it gets a little bit congested. Uh, you're also coming in to an area that we had a high back in May. Keeping in mind, folks, you traded down almost 600 S&P points from that recent high in May down to where you got to to early June. And you're also coming into an area that was an area of support back in late February, early March. That area could turn into an area of resistance. OK, so there's 4200 on the chart. We come to the Nasdaq 100 now. Nasdaq 100, you're sitting right at the 382 line of the entire move lower from about 16,700 down to below. I can't believe he. 11,000, right? You're talking about a 5,700 point run lower. We've already bounced to the three. That bounce also correlating to the area that we had from the lows back in March. Uh, ominous sometimes, folks, when you're coming into an area that's a Fibonacci retracement zone. Now, the NASDAQ 100, well above the highs we had from May. That high, 12,945. Then we made it up to 13,000, what, 350 already? Is that this that's that's this morning yeah 
13,350 this morning, already in the NASDAQ 100. But again, just bumping into these lows that we had for the better part of late February and early March. All right, jumping back to some of the other takes this morning. It's all going to be about earnings, folks. And it's going to be about earnings that have to do with inflation, cost measures, supply issues, human capital, a big issue right now. Tech earnings estimates for 2022 have shrunk over the past month. Soaring outlook fuels skepticism about rally from June low. To pull it up, S&P 500 tech earnings growth, excuse me, for 2022 have fallen. So you're talking about only about 11% growth. We came into July at about 13, excuse me, at about 13% growth. All right, big numbers. The NASDAQ has gained almost 20% for from where it was on June 16th, 20%. Staggering numbers. All right, it doesn't go all one way. They're fueled by better than feared results from the big stocks, man, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon. You've had treasuries decline. You've had crude prices decline, right, across the board. You've had the Fed at least say we're going to wait for the data instead of saying, and they could have come out, folks, and said, we're not going to wait for the data. We're going to bring at 75 basis points every single meeting until the data tells us inflation's over. They didn't say that. They said, we've hiked 75. We've done it twice in a row. We may consider 75 at the next meeting, but we're going to wait for the data. And the market just liked it. Hold on a second. It's not a predetermined path. Well, guess what? It's not a predetermined path, folks. But if we get some CPI prints that are bonkers coming up, right? And we've got a lot of data over the next two months. As I was talking about last week, you could see the conversation on Friday shifting to hold on a second is the economy so strong that inflation won't be able to be tamed and we're going to go back to a conversation of 75 or a full point from a conversation where the market's saying hold on maybe we'll just get 50 it's a possibility and i don't think the market is pricing it in as effectively as it should when the s p's are sitting at 4200 you have nvidia one of the biggest chip stocks out there coming out with horrible guidance at 9 a.m on monday morning and the market pretty much just takes it in stride. I mean, I know NVIDIA doesn't take it in stride, man, but you're talking about every index in the green right now coming off recent highs. We're 20% off the lows in the NASDAQ, and NVIDIA's coming out and saying they're going to miss 50%. And the market barely budges, at least for now. We're going to see where we open. That's the important one. Uh, even an average premium is tough to justify with rising rates, right? With estimates falling and stocks rising, the S&P 500 technology sector's price to projected earnings ratio now sits more than 20% above the average for the index. I'm not sure that's what you, where you want to be with everything going on right now. No, I'm not sure that's the case at all. All right, let's jump around to some others. Palantir, not doing so well, man. This stock, talk about a pump and dump. They were talking about it in the uh, Tiger's Den this morning, man. Taking a look at this equity, it's been a, a slow or a quick crawl to lower prices, depending on how you look at it, man. I think that's since they went public, right? Yeah, that's since they went public, man. They go public, this thing runs up to 45 bucks. You chop around for the better part of last year, but man, it's been lower prices. You make 644 in their last earnings. This morning, you're gonna open back above, uh, below $10. You're down about 10% on Palantir. You jump over to their numbers. Revenue for the quarter increased 26%. Commercial revenue grew 46%. But guess what? Loss per share, Compared with earnings, but the company beat revenue, where are they at? They lost a cent versus earning three. Revenue pretty much in line. Uh, the miss was due to a decline in investments and marketable sec securities. The strength and momentum we're seeing in our customers. Uh, let's see. Weak guidance is due to the lumpiness of government work. Yeah, there's always a lot of shade going on in this company, man. They do all sorts of secretive work, so you really can't understand what's going on. Uh, and, and, you know, investors that thought they were just going to ride the momentum train, not so much, man. You got punished hardcore with Palantir down this morning again by another 10% to under $10. You check out the short-term action, and there's your drop-off, man. Some tough earnings. All right, with some of the stocks we're moving this morning, we talked about Palantir. How about CVS? They might be buying Signify Health in a plan uh, to expand their in-home health services. It's all about it, folks. Uh, CVS, right? You got Amazon getting in the business with an acquisition last week. 
The Journal reports that CVS might be going after Signify. The paper had reported last week that Signify was exploring exploring strategic alternatives, including a sale. And you got Signify, S-G-F-Y, obviously on that news, spiking either even further. There's a pop for you. I mean, look at last week. There was the news probably on that acceleration. They come out with earnings. You were just trading at 17 bucks last week. You're going to open at $23 this week. Putting this thing back, 23 bucks. not bad, man. In terms of uh, CVS, not really getting that big of a deal on this equity. I guess you're going to open at 23, probably right where you were about a year ago, and you jump over to CVS this morning. And folks, that's what's happening, man. These big companies, they're changing the way that in-home healthcare, whether it's telehealth, the whole, whole deal is going to change, man. And in-home care isn't going to take over when you think about how these big companies can operate uh, and the amount of capital and money that is available in those industries. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P opening up 17 points right now you see that little drop at about nine o'clock with some nvidia guidance pretty horrible uh nvidia down 7.6 percent to kick off the trading week right now down 14 dollars nasdaq barely hanging on to those gains but we're trading lower on the open right now with the nasdaq up 14 points nasdaq 100 that is the dow 
up half a percent right now, up 163 points, and you got the Russell up about eight tenths percent right now. Bitcoin up 1100 bucks at 24,105. Bitcoin catching a decent bid uh, off of the lows at 18,000. Man, you look where we are. You're talking about a run of almost 30 percent from the lows that we had on June 30th for Bitcoin. Crude back above 88 bucks. We put it on a 15 minute chart to see the action on crude this morning. Uh, 8816 lower prices recently on crude gold contract up about six bucks at 1797 folks if you haven't checked out the gold report yet great time to do it my dad's got a new gold report out this morning he's trade recommendations out there this morning as well you can sign up for the gold report by visiting the front page of and you just go to the newsletters folks And there it is, the gold report, 119 bucks for you. And uh, my dad's going to have a special for the gold report. We sent it out over email this weekend, folks, okay? Check out his program tonight. He'll be talking about it. If you didn't get it, uh, shoot me an email, tommy at tfnn.com. I'll send it over. You can save 50% off the first month of the gold report. Still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Check it out, the gold report right there on the newsletter. New issue out this morning, gold rocking, man. I mean, you look at the gold contract, right? You back things on a three-year weekly, quite a pop. We got four weekly green bars, including this one. You had a low of 1678. Worse, just about three weeks ago in that gold contract. And uh, you can't hold this market down, folks. You can't hold it down. S&P's right now up 25 points, man. I, uh, you get it all back. Like the NVIDIA revision doesn't even matter. And folks, NVIDIA was talking about macro headwinds, okay? They weren't talking about that they fumbled the ball, that it was their company-specific issue. Macro headwinds to the tune of 20% revenue guidance miss, okay? A lot of that was in gaming. I mean, they were supposed to take in $3 billion in gaming. Now they're going to take in $2 billion. I'm not sure who's in charge of their gaming division, but they probably have some tough meetings going on recently. Uh, nonetheless... The market chugs along, and once we get to 4,200, folks, I'd be very careful at 4,200, man, in this market. Right now, you're looking at a yield in the 10-year approaching about 2.8%. How's my connection doing? No, I'm having some problems. I'm plugged in this morning, man. Am I chopping? Hopefully not too much. That's a bummer. Maybe my producer can let me know. Choppy, huh? That's a bummer. Dropouts. All right, we'll see if we can work on it. I'm plugged in. I'm rocking. We'll see. All right. Look at this market, man. Oh, we're just sitting here just watching it in forward. Dow up 222, NASDAQ 100 up 86. The SP approaching at 30. Wild stuff, folks. All right, let's jump to uh, Barrett Gold. Yeah, they're out with their numbers trading higher. Better than expected quarterly results helped by higher copper output. Copper, but on the run, man, you jump over to their symbol. Got to love their symbol, right? Gold, nothing like it. Barrick catches a bit up about 3% right now. You got the gold contract up as well, but they come out with their numbers, strong numbers. Barrick up to 16.08 this morning. Uh, other companies we got going on. So Baidu, they're going to uh, operate driverless taxi services in two Chinese cities. First such approvals in the country, man. China, AI, they're bringing it. And Baidu, they're going to be operating driverless taxis in two Chinese cities, folks. It's coming. It's all coming. Uh, probably faster than we think. Self-driving cars, I mean, I almost spin it two ways, folks. I often joke with my friends. You ever send a friend a text and uh, autocorrect completely blows the text, right? And it's something very simple. Like maybe you have one simple typo in one word and autocorrect can't figure out the appropriate word to put in that sentence that is probably pretty easy from an AI perspective. It's probably very easy from an AI perspective if you, you consider what is necessary for knowledge to navigate driving without a driver and having a, that last 1%, folks, that last half percent where cars need to be able to navigate everything, it's going to be so difficult. And I imagine it's going to be a big problem when we start getting into it and you have computers controlling cars, you have accidents that may happen. We see them happen with Tesla all the time, man. Um, and how do we get over that last half percent hurdle? Because it seems like there's always going to be accidents right now. But nonetheless, it marches on. The first rollouts are going to be in these small cities, right, where, where computers can actually learn every single nuance of the city getting to know every nuance of every road across the country or the globe a lot tougher than trying to learn the nuance of every single 
uh, road in one small city or one small neighborhood even for some of the, uh, whether it's food delivery vehicles, right, robotics, et cetera. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up. Yeah, insulin. So this one's a tough one, right? Um, so insulin costs are not going to be capped in the new act that's been passed by Congress. All right. Democrats had tried to preserve the provision to cap insulin costs at $35 for private insurance, but that vote failed 57-43. You actually had seven Republican senators voting for that. You needed to get 10 out of the 50 to vote for it. Couldn't get it done to get over the 60 threshold, so that won't be included. This is some of the stuff that baffles me, folks. So I understand the core argument of it, okay? Man, oh man, when you look at, I was just looking it up this morning, right? I was Googling it. In 1996, when Eli Lilly debuted its Humalog brand of insulin, a fast-acting type of insulin, a vial cost $21. Do you know what it costs now? More than 10 times that number, folks, okay? It cost $21 when they brought it to market in 1996. It costs more than $210 now, all right? They attribute some of those to supply chain issues, more complicated, researchers, researchers said. Each step added to the chain means another entity is collecting profits, leading to higher costs for patients dependent on that insulin. Uh, where am I? I wanna get one more thing here. Yes, the average List price for a unit of insulin, okay? Check this out. That's not the one. We're going to get to that story next, okay? The average list price for a unit of insulin in Australia is $6.94. In the UK, $7.52. In France, $11. Germany, $12. Uh, Canada, $14. United States, $98.70. It's a shame, folks, that somehow we think that, like, society can't exist and companies can't exist unless people are basically price gouged for insulin to survive. I don't know how that happens, uh, but nonetheless, politics marches on. So that won't be included. Uh, you're talking about, I think it's 7 million people. They say, yeah, 7 million people of Americans require daily insulin and this number was staggering, man, how much they spend. So check it out. Now, this is from July of 2022, all right? Yale News. Uh, Yale researchers, okay? 14% of people who use insulin in the United States, so 7 million people use insulin. So you're talking about what? 14%. You're talking about 800,000 Americans, 900,000 Americans, almost a million Americans, okay? spend at least 40% of their post-subsidence income after paying for food and housing on insulin. Amazing numbers. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bare charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leverage ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up 32 points right now, folks. We're at 4179. Talk about getting it all back, man. NVIDIA, market's not worried about NVIDIA, man. This market above where we were coming into that NVIDIA guidance, man, 4178. Seems like we might just touch 4200, man, if we're that close to that price level. 4179, NASDAQ 100. You're up almost a full percent right now. Let's check in on some of the FANG stocks right now. Amazon shares. Can't hold Amazon down, man. Up more than 2% yet again. This thing is on a run. My dad had some great talk about Amazon last week. Look at this run, man, that it's had. You chop around at about 100 bucks from May to late May to June to June 30th. You were sitting at a price level July 13th of 106. And Amazon today, 143.87, up 2.2% right now. Pretty remarkable. Amazon now back to January 20th. Now, Amazon had lagged last year, okay? You put this thing on a three-year weekly, right? Barely positive for 2021 when the S&P was up like 27% or something staggering there. Uh, so you are back to late January prices for, for Amazon right now. But again, they had lagged after the gangbuster year they had in 20-minute chart. We check out the big dog Apple this morning. Apple's up 1.1% right now. Microsoft shares up 8 tenths percent right now. Google shares up 1.7% right now. You jump over to Meta shares right now. Whew, up 3.3% from Meta. Let's see other travel stocks. Boeing's up about 2% right now. American Airlines up 27 Delta up 22 You're going to see higher prices across the board for everything, man. Uh, jumping back to that insulin story real quick. So, again, folks, this can get happen, get done, all right? I know it, it is a lot of lobbyists, but... You're talking about 43 of 50 Republican senators said, I, I, I don't want government to say that insulin has a cap, you know, and the number of people you're hitting here. And to bring it in the fruition of like the last sentence or paragraph, I should say, this article that was written. And again, this is talking about from last month. It's from Yale. OK, uh, if we as a healthcare system make insulin out of reach for people, not only is that ethically wrong, but it's also going to cost us more in the long term economically we're harming ourselves whether you care about people or not okay because that's the real deal of it okay whether you care about people or not these are people who need insulin to live and i just told you that almost 15 percent of everybody taking insulin did you see that number i finished up with folks okay let's do it again because it's staggering i had to read through it 14 percent of people who use insulin okay spend at least 40 percent of their income after paying for food and housing on insulin that is staggering, and it's a shame that that's what we promote as Americans, all right? That's a million Americans are paying more than that after you have the prices rising tenfold over the last 25 years, okay? Now you say, okay, what if you don't care about people because you're such a, a private business rights Republican, okay? What if you don't care about people because the market will take care of people? Well, it's not taking care of people, folks. It's not even taking care of the money that we're spending because – 
it's going to cost us more in the long term. Why? Because people can't afford insulin. They don't take the insulin and they end up in the hospital. Higher admissions. OK, we're seeing more hospital admissions for high blood pressure, sugar emergencies and for complications. We're seeing more disability, which we all pay for Dis- disability. We could do a three week program on and and poor outcomes in this very large group of people. So it's costing us more money in the long run. It's harming Americans in the short run. And we're allowing medical companies to price gouge the people who need insulin on a daily basis to the tune of tenfold price increases. And Republicans says, nope. We got to protect those private businesses at all costs because that's who our line our coffers come election season, folks. All right, this is about Americans, okay? And it's a shame that something so simple gets put up. And there's not. This is a single vote, folks. They voted for this single vote. There was nothing else clouding this vote. They voted up or down on this single issue, and 43 out of 50 Republican senators said no. We want to let those companies price gouge because that's how they create jobs, all right? It's a bummer, folks. Pay attention to what's going on. This one should be a wake up, all right? In, in the long run, it costs more. So if you don't care about people, you're still screwing yourselves. But somehow that doesn't mesh, all right? It's a bummer, man. People need to wake up what's going on because that is a bummer. All right, back to the gold report, folks. If you're checking out the gold report, all right? I went in, I made sure I had it. Uh, so my dad, he put out this weekend. He's got a sale for you, folks, all right? The, the promo code that you want to use is GOLD50, and you can save 50% off your first month. You can go sign up for it right now. He's got new recommendations in there this morning. He puts a new report out every Monday morning, so you can check out the newest one today. You head on over to the front page of TF. All right, you can hit subscribe. You go in there for the monthly price, okay, where it says promo code. You just add GOLD50. Make sure you hit the add button. And there it is. You save almost 60 bucks on your first month. The best part is, folks, you end up paying 59.50, and it still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not into it, you don't use it, you don't think it's something that will provide value, you don't have enough time for it, whatever the reason, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to risk. Best case scenario, you save 50% off your first month in there, uh, and we got gold. The reason why he's putting it out, folks, is we had some action in gold for the first time in a while uh, on that gold report. And... In 48 hours, we got quite a webinar, folks. If you really want a full trading education, our man Basil Chapman is going to be in there Wednesday from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time with his entire Chapman Wave methodology. Now, Basil has updated this webinar, folks, okay? He updated this webinar to include everything that he does on a daily basis, and sometimes that's getting updated, all right? So this is not going to be the same five-hour webinar that Basil's done times in the past, He's looked at his methodology. He's fine-tuned that webinar. He's got five hours of education. The cost is only $295, folks. And I say only because I mean it. Because courses like this 10 years ago used to cost $5,000 to go to. Okay? It's $295. You get his newsletter, which is $149 value immediately. That's basically half the value of the course. Basil's newsletter, folks, comes with 13 archived webinars. 13 of them, immediately you gain access to his past webinars, going past the, the going back the last couple of years, you gain access to that, and this webinar will be archived as well. Five hours, watch it as many times as you like, and gra- Basil's a great educator, folks. He's not only a great trader, the way he conveys knowledge, okay, to his students, uh, he keeps up with you, he'll answer any question you want live, he's looking at live charts, talking about entries, entry, uh, exits, he's got the whole list in terms of what he's talking about here, folks, please check it out if you haven't attended before, great webinar, we got some signups going on already, should be a good group of traders in there on Wednesday with our man Basil Chapman. And what else do we have, folks? Today, we got a new time slot for our man Larry Pesavento and for our man Steve Rhodes. Larry's going to be back today, folks. And he's going to be back at 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's his new time slot. Trade what you see will air going forward at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Our man Steve Rhodes, he's moving on two hours to the 11 a.m. time slot with the Trader's Edge. So Basil's after us at 10 o'clock. We got our man Steve Rhodes kicking off his 11 a.m. time slot today. Then we got Fast Market as usual at 12. Larry Pesavento back in the saddle at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Our man Dave White with a power trading hour from 2 till 3. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps things up from 3 till 4. And man, we're gonna have quite a market, man. You know, we got the S&P up 33 points. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 139, folks. 
wild markets across the board. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the program. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And you can't hold a good market down, man. s and is now up 40 points right now, trading at 41.86. Folks, we're almost 80 points off of the lows we had on Friday. We're a solid 25 points above where we were on Friday when we got 500,000-plus jobs and an unemployment at 3.5%. No matter what – well, I shouldn't say that because I'm going to give you the no matter what. As long as – is a better way to put it – the Fed tames inflation – a strong economy is the best thing we can ask for, man. We want jobs, right? We want job uh, wages to be gained, and we want unemployment at low levels. The problem is, is that we're dealing with rapid inflation. So the numbers on Friday are good as long as inflation comes down. That's not what's happened yet. We're going to get CPI this week, so we get to see how that data is reflecting what the Fed's been doing, okay? But normally, a number like that, when the Fed is trying to tame inflation, would cause the market a little bit of hysteria with the fact that, hold on a second, 
if we don't have inflation sinking, the Fed's going to say the economy is so strong it can handle higher rates because we're adding 500,000 jobs with unemployment at 3.5%. It hasn't caught up with the market yet, man. It caught up with the market for about 30 minutes on Friday morning until it recoiled higher. We choppy action on Friday, and we're starting right out of the gate this morning. NASDAQ 100 up 1.3%. We got the big dog straight and higher, as I said. Amazon up 2.2%. Apple right now, what's Apple trading? up 1.3 percent I mean, I said Apple on last Wednesday added a hundred billion dollars in market cap to that company Apple Apple since the June low of 129 folks we're talking about adding what are we up we're up what forty dollars and you're talking about 16 billion shares outstanding folks you're talking about more than 600 billion dollars in market cap added since June for that company at some point, there's going to be a pullback, folks. We haven't had a pullback to the tune um, of almost two months now, while Apple's added $600 billion in market cap. So be careful out there. Folks, stay tuned. Check out Basil's webinar on Wednesday. He's coming up next. Great five hours of live uh, education with our man Basil. And stay tuned. Steve Rhodes at 11. Larry Pesavento at 1. Have a great Monday, everybody. <laughs>